I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and hot diggity, another unboxing video. This concludes a series uh, that I've been running this week of all the various things people have sent me to take a look at. This one right here seems at first a little bit odd. It's a Prem Wing TV remote controlled rotating antenna and designed to receive high definition television in those areas and cities that have it. Now the thing that interested me was that the antenna specs seemed to overlap some of the amateur radio bands and I'd noticed that MFJ has this very thing in its catalog under slightly different name. So let's open it up and see what's really inside and then we'll see if we can have it uh, receive some high definition television uh, because that is what an amateur might be doing if trying ATV or amateur television in one of the higher uh, either UHF or microwave bands. Let's take a look. By the way, uh, old ATV signals from from amateur radio operators tend to take about 6 megahertz bandwidth. Uh, HDTV is much more efficient. You get a far better picture at only 2, kil uh, two megahertz bandwidth handy cord there. Okay, what do we have? We have a lengthy piece of coax uh, with these little F connectors on them that are so common in television. Oh dear, I see a construction project coming. Okay, got a little power Here's a, looks like a mounting device of some kind. Here is, looks like the antenna proper. It's going to hold everything together. Here is the little power supply thingy for the television. Something, a mask, I guess. Here's a button for remote control for TV rotating antenna. And there are all the instructions. Now that we've got everything on the table, let's see what we've got here. This is model FD-094B super active TV antenna high quality far ranging reception UHF TH, VHF TV and FM radio parabolic focusing reception built in high gain booster built in low noise circuit 360 degree all direction rotation uh, with infrared remote control can operate antenna manually easy to install and operate Okay, and it's made by an ISO 9001 certified factory. Basically, what that means is that they follow their processes. They're proven to power 3 watts, max rotation 360, gain 18 to 28, uh, frequency 40 to 910. Okay, so that's UHF, VHF. You could use this as a listening antenna. Uh, and two meters, uh, public service bands, uh, 70 centimeter band, uh, channels low, high, and UHF, which is uh, uh, the old way channels were numbered. Some of those UHF channels are in the uh, US 70 centimeter band, so you can transmit television on that. Impedance 75 ohms, which by the way is normal for television work. Amateurs use a 50 max output level DBU, I guess that's DB relative to a microwatt, 145. Noise coefficient, I'm presuming that's the noise factor. It says less than 3. If it is, that's very good. Rotating speed 4 to 6 round per minute. That's pretty fast. Uh, dimensions, oh, I don't know. We'll see when we mean. And it is probably made in China.
Okay. So, what do we have here? Let's open up the parts and pieces. Going to need a pair of scissors for this. Okay, it's got uh, two female F connectors and one male uh, completely unlabeled. There's a rotation superpower on off and some sort of a thing here. We'll see. Okay, this right here is the Power supply for that it is 15 volt AC at 400 milliamp output it runs on AC 15 volts okay a little different from the amateur world okay, here's the main goodie so tell us how to put it together um, and like these go up on there these will go up on there and then these things will fold up it's got a piece of metal across here to act as a quasi parabolic uh, reflector okay now let's take a look at the instructions one fix the motor holder onto the motor with screws Three by ten. Isn't it nice to have a place to conveniently put things so that they're off the video? Yes, they are on the floor, and yes, I do have to pick them up and throw them out. Okay, here is an orange something that says antenna. And there are in here several screws of different sizes. Oh boy. Okay. Screws of different sizes, lovely. Uh, so it says an extremely tiny print there, three times ten. So that would be ten millimeters, which is. This is the motor in here. This is the, we'll go at the top of the mast. Okay. And it's got some screws to hold it on. It goes at the top of the mast. So you can't put it midway up the mast without a special holder. Let's see what happens next. Um, we are to put the uh, motor on the main mount. We're also to put all the directors, this is a Yagi by the way, push all the directors onto the mast and screw them down with M3 by 8. Okay, which is a little longer than the I don't know, we're just going to use screws that fit and we'll see what happens. Now these down here, 
for the motor there's the one pin that goes in there which I think is going to hold the mast in place okay and then there's other little screws that are going to hold the elements in place so let's see how that goes I'm screwing these so that they kind of get to the get to the natural point where they seem to want to stop. Forcing it any beyond that will strip everything out because this is just made of a pretty soft plastic. Well, that's ridiculous. But well, they're all the same length. Okay, so we put one. One here, there's a... Alright, this is the element. This is the director. All these are the same size. There's a spot here for a screw to go into the mast. And there are little screw holes in the mast on the other side. See? Okay, so we'll just put those in. I think we'll put the others on from the other end. Okay, so we're going to put, we have five screws left. That's obviously Chinese. They don't want us to literally screw up. <sighs> it means screw in, not anything else. And then the last one shows how it's connected and what goes to the television and so on. So I'm going to set up a little something here to see if we can't um, at least make this thing rotate. Okay. Let's give it a try. If we look at the little, what do they call this piece, right? Power supply. And uh, super power on off. Um, there's three connectors coming out the back. Plus, this one has a built in wire right here. Now, let's look at the wiring diagram in here. What we see here is that it doesn't show, does it? It shows two. That's very strange. Okay, here's what we're trying to do. This is the connector on the antenna, and this is the connector that's supposed to go onto it. And you can see the wire in there is supposed to go down inside that hole and then screw on that. And not the easiest thing in the world. Let's give it another try. Studio is going to be reset up soon. So I'm using a 7 16 wrench to tighten this. It's going to take quite a bit since I'm doing it by hand. And then this round thing here is where the uh, rain thing comes over it. Here the antenna is assembled and it's uh, sitting in a window. Uh, the screen is uh, made of nylon so it doesn't stop the radio waves at all. I've got this thing pointed down the canyon so that uh, I can pick up something hopefully from Grand Junction. It's uh, 
sitting right here with the cable going down to uh, a television set. And this is uh, the one I use in my studio as my monitor for uh, taking videos. Uh, it does seem to have a, a very nice signal. I was surprised, quite surprised, at how many stations this thing picked up. It's amazing. Uh, you can see down here as uh, just what the view is down the canyon. That's the only direction we have that we can get any signals at all. Let's take another look at the canyon. Here is the canyon, looking down the canyon uh, from our house with a telephoto lens. And you can see that in the distance there's a gray object. That is the Grand Mesa outline. Uh, it's on the order 70 miles away from us. Note that uh, we cannot see the western tip of a Grand Mesa. If we look at the map uh, coming from Grand Mesa down to where we are, uh, it's uh, somewhat over 70 miles. Uh, there are several places around Grand Junction where they have TV towers. And uh, I've taken this one off of one of the bluffs that looks over uh, Grand Mesa. As you can see, it's uh, quite a distance that it's coming down to us. All right, this is the elevation profile along the line that I showed you in the last picture. And you can see that we do not have a direct line of sight to where the antennas tend to congregate around Grand Junction. Uh, the thing to the left there is the actual Grand Mesa itself. Uh, and then closer to home, we have some issues with uh, the local buttes are just in the wrong place. So the bottom line is that uh, this antenna uh, picks up pretty well and uh, does a reasonable job. And if it can do this for uh, uh, commercial television, it's very possible that with uh, much less distance and the lower powered amateur television stations that you could get something pretty good out of that. It does have a preamp inside, a powered preamp, and it is rotatable. It has a nice little motor in it so you can rotate it 360 degrees, which is a very nice thing to have for an amateur television antenna. Okay, so this is Dave, KE0OG. This has been an interesting digression from uh, the normal amateur radio antennas to look at a more commonly available antenna for uh, high-definition de high television. Uh, this antenna can be used on the 2-meter and 70-centimeter bands. 70-centimeter band, there's a fair amount of amateur television uh, taking place, uh, so you can look there and, and, and play around with it. I was amazed that it brought in so many channels from Grand Junction because we are so far away and we don't have a straight line of sight. Uh, so it was picking up a number of signals, uh, both standard definition and high definition, uh, without any noise, doing a, a good job. So uh, there you go. It's a very inexpensive antenna. Uh, I've got down at the bottom of the screen where you can go to get it and hope that... Uh, uh, if you do get it, that you'll have good luck with it. As you can see, it took a fair amount of uh, assembly, uh, which you could do on a card table. That's how I put the thing together. And then it probably should be best mounted outside. It does rotate. That's a very nice feature. I have to admit that I have thought of mounting the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, uh, receive only antennas uh, from MFJ and from W6LVP on top of it just so I could rotate them with that but we'll see maybe I'll play around with that in the meantime please uh, take a look at the technician general and extra training videos if you want to get your license and uh, the ask Dave uh, panel uh, if you would like to ask a question and uh, please feel free to live, uh, leave a comment. If you did do a thumbs up, it really helps uh, uh, bring these videos to the attention of others and we can uh, share the fun of amateur radio with them. So until next time, 73.